Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. We welcome any visitor that might be visiting with us today. It's a good day to be in God's house to worship. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Church here in Athens, Georgia. And this is Preacher Edward speaking. And I know what we have lined up for the singing today. Brother Tony has done a good job at that, I'm sure, and be a blessing to you. And if you get on the phone, then the radio listening audience, call a friend, be doing them a favor. And the message, music, and the singing will be on tape number 235. That's tape number 235. If you'd like to have this tape or any of our other tape, why well, you just write in and request it. You can request it by number or by title. And I'm going to speak today on Robin God. And the tape will be 235. Well, I have 233 listed here. I'd be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape. If you just write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me a list of your tape. I'd be glad to do so. These tape have been a blessing to people in their homes where they shut in, in convalescent homes, and, and even in prison. Someone carried one of our tape to a prison here some time ago, and I believe 11 people were saved by listening to that tape. And you never know what God may do through the tape that you might write in and obtain and let others hear it. We preach the word of God. You'll enjoy the good singing and the music. So why not write in and get some of our cassette tape? Because this is a faith ministry. And the only way we can stay on the air is by you, the listener, you that love God, you that see the need of this home mission work standing by us. Now, this radio ministry here is one of the arms of our church here. It's a home mission work. And then we have missionaries on the foreign field. We help support many missionaries. We have a jail ministry. We help and support a jail ministry. We have two orphan homes. We help and support. We have two camps. We help and support. And plus the activities all in the church here. And so when you support our ministry, whether it be the church ministry or the radio ministry or whatnot, you're investing in a great cause to the glory of God and worthy of your support. We're now in our 38th year of daily broadcasting from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. And so since this program's been on there 38 years daily almost, then it's of God, no doubt about that, because much has been accomplished through this radio ministry, the very worthy cause. Remember that mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603. Now you can write in for the list of tape and you can write in for the brochure for our proposed Holy Land tour to the Holy Land next March. So you let me hear from you next week. Take your Bible and turn with you please to the book of Malachi. That's the last book in the Old Testament. The last book in the Old Testament. You turn there and let's see what God has to say about this matter of robbing him and you turn there and read with me it's not necessarily what I might think or say about it it's what God has to say about it now in Old Testament days they didn't have uh, money and salaries like you have today where you get your ticket and, and you bring your money home and you invest a portion into God's work in those days they depended upon their crops their fields their vineyards and they would bring a tenth of their corn and wheat and, and uh, grape juice and whatnot, figs and so forth, to the house of God. And when they'd bring it to the house of God, they had what they called the storehouse. They would store that food in that storehouse. And then as they needed it to uh, help take care of the poor, the needy, the missionaries, or uh, whatnot, they would have it there to take care of their needs. And so time have changed over the years. We don't have a storehouse built out here to bring all kind of crops of the, that is products from your crops such as corn and wheat and potatoes. We could bring them in, I guess, and put them out here in a Sunday school room or somewhere, but we don't work in that manner today. Neither do other churches. Some churches have 
place where they keep clothing and maybe a pantry where they have food. But today, whenever you come to the house of God, you're not to come and bring a tenth of your corn and uh, your wheat and, and potatoes or whatnot. There used to be a time in, when back in days of depression, whenever the church members out in the country during the August meetings would have to bring in uh, food like that to take care of the preacher, chickens and ham and eggs and what not. They'd bring them in and that's what they took care of the preacher with in those days and have much money. Some of you old timers remember that. But times have changed. Now God's method today is for His people to bring a portion of their income, the money that they've earned, the money that they've been given to them or what not, into the place of worship, the house of God, and then to help take care of God's business. Now, God's business is the greatest business in all the world. And whenever you support God's business, you're supporting the greatest business in all the world. You need to realize that. And so when you give, when you give your ear uh, into the collection plate, or uh, whether you give a dollar on the broadcast or whatnot, it's part of the ministry here at Northside, and God keeps the record. And God will bless you and honor you for obeying Him and giving of your means here because we do have many missionaries on the field. We have home mission works of different kind. And we have our responsibility or obligation here at Northside. And I want to help you to uh, be honest before God. I'm not bringing this message here to beat anybody over the head or down anyone. I'm bringing this message to encourage you to do that which is right and to prove to you from the Word of God, if you'll do that which is right, then God is duty-bound by His own Word to bless you and to take care of your need and look after you. God tells you that in the Bible. Now look at Malachi chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3 and verse uh, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God is telling us He doesn't change. He's the same God. But God does change His methods and ways of doing things along. We don't offer lambs on the altar anymore because Jesus fulfilled that. Now in verse 7, Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from mine ordinances, and you have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, Wherein shall we return? They had left God, they had backslidden on God, and God said, you return back to me. And they said, how can we do it? And then God asked the question, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. You say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Now there's a difference in your tithe and your offering. A tithe is a tenth. A tithe is one dime out of a dollar. A tithe is a dollar out of every ten. Ten dollars out of every hundred. That's your tithe. Everything that's given above that tithe is an offering. And God said, you have robbed me with your tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. For I want to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightful land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now God said the nation of Israel had failed to bring their fruit, their grain, their corn, and their offerings. They made offerings in those days. Offer a little lamb, offer a turtle dove, and so forth. You fail to bring those tithes and those offerings back into God's storehouse there where they kept the food and everything. As I said, we have the church today. We have somewhat of a different system, but you still have the same obligation and responsibility. Now, you're not expected to bring a turtle dove or a lamb to be sacrificed. Jesus fulfilled that on Calvary. But the matter of giving of the tithe and the giving of offerings have never been changed. All the way through the Bible, even before... God gave the law to Moses, and after that, all the way through the Bible, God plainly tells us that that tithe belongs to Him, 
And when you give above that tithe, that's an extra offering. That's a love gift to God because of God being so good to you. Now we have very few tithers today, I'm sorry to say. I would want to embarrass you because if I would ask you how many of you tithe, and if you'd give me an honest, I mean an honest answer, we'd all be embarrassed. You may say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Now what I mean by that is this. A tithe is a tenth of your income. Now you may be making, uh, you say if you're making $500 a week and you give 40, you're not a tither. Don't call yourself a tither if you're making $500 a week and giving 40, you're not. Now, if you're making $300 a week and you're giving $25, you're not a tither. Your tithe would be $30. Don't ever call yourself a tither unless you're giving a tenth of your income. Now, I started tithing my income back many, many years ago. Now, I've had people that come to me and say, Preacher Edwards, I wish my husband was a, a manager like you, able to manage what uh, little income you get to make it go as far as it goes and have what you have. No, I'm not a good manager. I've been a tither of my income all these years. I know a lot of people today, they fight like a struggling man trying to drown to get their head above the water. And they're not going to be able to do it because they robbed God. Now God said, when you don't give that tithe, you rob me. Now if you had an enemy out here, and your enemy came up and pulled a gun on you, and uh, said, I want your money, and then he took your money and he's your enemy. And yet you say, I don't like that. All right, now God is your friend. God is your friend and you're supposed to be a friend of God. And yet you rob God. You take God's money. Now one of the biggest sins of the average church today that I've passed in my ministry is a sin of robbing God. If all of God's church members, those who are saved, would give a tenth of our income in the work of God, we could begin to add more and more missionaries in our outreach for God. We could accomplish much more for the Lord and get things done if all of God's children would tithe. I know most of you, many of you, you drop in an offering. You, some of you may give more than others. But the question is, are you a tither? And then if you're a tither, do you love Jesus enough to give him a little love offering along? Now, I'm not trying to be braggadocious, but my wife can verify this. When I take my tithe, which is God, it's not really mine, and I give that to the Lord, I take out a little love offering because God's been so good to me, I give God a little love offering. I say, Lord, you've been so good to me and you've blessed me and he has a little love offering in addition to my tithe. Now, if you don't believe that works, you ought to try that. I've tried it for years. And it works. It certainly works. And God Almighty will bless you when you give Him something for loving Him for what He's done for you. Now the tithe is God's. That's His anyway. So actually when you give the tenth, you're just giving God that that's already His. God will bless you for that. God will bless you for giving back to Him which is His. But when you slip in a little love gift, and in addition to that, you're going to see things happening on down the road. Now if you don't believe it, you ought to try. Now, if you make $150 a week and you drop in 10, you're not a tither. If you make $1,000 a week and you drop in, um, uh, say, uh, $75, you're not a tither. You'd have to give 100 in order to be a tither if you make 1000 a week. Now, there's a man one time, he made uh, $20 a week. And he came in every Lord's Day and he gave $2, God's tithe. And then he began, God began to bless him. He began to get a raise. And finally they raised him up until he was making $50 a week. You know what he did? He said, that's too much. If I start giving $5 a week into the church, and then that's just absolutely too much. And, um, and I'm not going to give that much into the church. Because if I did, I'd probably be giving more than some of the others. He's compared himself with others. And he's, God, in order to keep that man honest and keep him from being a, a robber and keeping him being a crook with his money, God just reduced his salary back down to uh, $20 a week so he'd be honest. Now, if God blesses you and God causes you to earn more and you work extra time and overtime, that's a blessing from God. That you ought to tithe, uh, God's tithe out of that. You ought to be able to give of an offering out of it. And do all you can for God because 
Most of us don't go out and win souls like we should or go out and sacrifice like we should for God. And we ought to be willing, if we have health to work and put in long hours and draw the money, we ought to be willing to invest that in the work of God. That is God's part plus offerings. Oh, somebody said, as soon as I get on my feet, I'm going to tithe. Don't be surprised if you never get on your feet. God doesn't do business like that. The very moment you step out by faith and honor God and begin to tithe, then God may put you on your feet quicker than you realize. God doesn't do business. You said, well, when I get squared away and get my debts paid off and, and uh, get what I want and buy what I want and take the trips I want to take and go where I want to go and get everything in order, then I'm going to tithe. Don't be surprised if you never get all of that done because God's not with you in all of that. In order to have God with you, you must honor God first. The first belongs to God. Every time you draw your salary, you ought to take out God's first. And then if you want to give God a love off in addition to that, all right, well and good. But give God His first. In the book of Proverbs, He said, I want the first fruits. And God will bless you if you'll give Him the first fruits. I always take out God's part first. When this church here gives me a little money, to keep body and soul together so Mama Sue won't have to go barefooted and, and have to do without a few groceries. I always take out God's part first. And I take God's part out and then what's left, I say, Lord, I want you to give me wisdom to know how to handle what's left over here. And if you'll take out God's part first, then God will give you wisdom to use your part that you might get more accomplished. You have a lot of church members. If they're here on Sunday, they may give. But if they miss out next Sunday, they just cancel that all out and take God's money and spend it on themselves. They come back the next Sunday, they give the next Sunday, but they don't give what they failed to give the Sunday before. What you did, you robbed God. You stole God's money, you became a robber and a thief and kept God's money. What you should have done, if you couldn't have been in church, it laid the side, and when you come the next Lord's Day, double up. God doesn't excuse you just because you're not in church. An attitude like that is selfish and selfish indeed. What you're saying is if I can't be there and enjoy the service, I won't have any part in financing God's work. That is selfish indeed. You don't fool God there. You fool nobody but yourself. Now if you have to miss out a Sunday too and you're not able to be in God's house, then of course uh, lay it aside, bring it when you come because God's work goes on Every day, every week, throughout the entire year. We have to pay our bills here every week, every month, throughout the year. Now you're not going to get far ahead if you're saved, if you're robbing God. Now if you're not saved, you may go to hell anyway. But if you're saved, you're not going to get far if you're robbing God. I hope if you're not saved, you'll get saved. Because you don't know when God may call you to have to leave this world. Now who's to give anyway? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him. The Bible said that every one of you. We have a few young people here, and I thank God for them. They're very wise. Some of them wise in their parents in this respect. They have a job. They may not make as much as their parents, but they tie their income. That's very, that's wisdom. That's wise. Those young people are doing exactly right and God keeps a record and God will not overlook it. You young people, when you get your job, if you don't make but just $50 a week, you be sure God gets his tithe out of that $5. If you don't make but $25, you be sure God gets that two dollars a half. You see to that that that's done. And you continue that throughout your life and when you come to the end of life's journey, you're going to be surprised how God's blessed you and what's been accomplished through your life. Some of the most wealthiest men in America today are Christians and some of them are giving 90% of their income into the work of God and living on 10% of course they can easily do it because they're millionaires. Now Laterno when he started out he started giving a little amount and God blessed him and he wound up giving 90% and living off of 10%. Now think about that. Now God bless, I can mention others, that's J.C. Penney, that's uh, Colgate, others that uh, started honoring God with their tithes and their, and their offerings. That's one of the greatest things you can do. And you parents, you ought to tell your children to do it and set the example before them. Don't let them start out robbing God. You parents ought to tell them what they ought to do. 
if they don't listen to you, then uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be the ones going to suffer. They'll never be able to get ahead. They'll never get on their feet. And not only that, God says He can withdraw His blessings. He can let the buyer come and, and take care of your income. And you could have all kinds of problems and sickness and whatnot that will take your income and you wonder why it's happening. Well, have you ever thought about honoring God once in a while and, and letting God come to your rescue and taking care of you in time of need? I guarantee you this. Now, this I don't say you're not going to have any illness. If you're tired, you will. Job was the greatest man on the earth. And he had problems. And you can tithe and double tithe. You may still have problems, but it may be a test and God may test you to see what you'll do about it. And you continue on for God and God I'll see you come out victorious in the end. And we're all living in the body. And these bodies are going to give us trouble sooner or later. They're not glorified yet. But doing our problems, God will be with us and God will help us. And one of the greatest things you could do is tithe your income into God's work. Don't say you're a tither if you don't give a tenth. I know many of you drop in your money and put your check in or put your money in your envelope. But don't call yourself a tither if you don't give a tenth. You may say, I give some money. That's good and fine. Glad it's better to give some than none. But what I'm trying to say is don't say I'm a tither. To say you're a tither means that you're investing 10% into God's work. And very few people are doing that. that. That's a shame. That's one of the sins of many of our churches. I guess if we had uh, one of the outstanding sins of Northside, that would be it. And I just uh, surmise that some of the other churches could say likewise. I run in meetings and run hundreds of meetings in years gone by. And I visit churches and I notice on their board their income. And many churches, not as large as Northside, have an income of five and six times more than we have here in Northside. They don't have any more gospel preached. Uh, they don't have any more outlet probably than we have. Uh, they may be supporting more missionaries, but we're trying to do more. And things like that. Grease my heart. I'm not bringing out dirty clothes out before the radio listening audience. I'm just telling you the truth. And, and people in the radio listening audience and here too can visit churches and find the same situation most anywhere they go. Now people go buy what they want. If they want to uh, buy clothes or a funny tour or if they want to buy uh, automobiles or uh, anything they want to buy, any place they want to go, if they want to take a trip, if they want to uh, go on a vacation, if they want to do this, they do it. They do it, and that's their business. I I'm not condemning that. That is their business if they want to do that. And yet completely ignore God and God's business financially and expect God to be good to them and bless them. You ought to honor God and put God first in every step of your life. And then whatever happens, God can see you through and take care of you. Oh, I'm not able to preach it. Soon as I get able, I'll be tithing. Don't worry, you may never be able. Don't be surprised if you never get able. If you think you're getting able, God may jerk the rug out from under your feet because you have ignored Him. I wouldn't count too much about getting on my feet if I was a born-again Christian and didn't tithe my income. I wouldn't count on it too much because there's too many ways that God can take what you got away. God's been good to you and God's been good to me. And God has given most of us good health, many of us. And God's given us a decent place to live. And we have sufficient food to eat. And we have clothes to wear. And we have automobiles to ride in. And God's been good to us. And yet many times we turn out to be a robber. We turn around and rob God. After God's been so good to us, we ought to be ashamed. Now, if you'd start tithing, if you're not a tither, you'd be surprised what God will do with that uh, 9% left, that is if you uh, have, uh, say if you have $100, you have an income of $100, and you give God the $10, you'd be surprised what God will do with that 90. God will take that $90, and listen to me now, I say this on the start of God's word, God will take that $90, and you'll be able to do far more with that $90 than you would have if you had stole God's tithe and put that with your nine and made the hundred. You're not going to get as much and accomplish as much without a hundred dollars because you rob God. Now let's not be guilty of that sin. That's a sin. God said you have robbed me and I had to withdraw my blessings. And God said if you'll give your tithes and your offerings, I'll just open up the window of heaven and just pull you out of blessing. You won't be able to receive. 
So we need to realize if we'll honor God, he'll honor us. There was a woman one time. Uh, she's very poor. Her husband was a drunkard. And she had some little children. He came in drunk one night and set the house on fire. And she had to jump out the upper window with the children. And just before she jumped out that window, uh, she picked up her, her grandfather's gold watch. Valuable gold watch. Watching, she picked it up, had it in her hand when she landed on the ground. That's the only thing that she saved. After that, she went to a missionary conference, and the missionary was talking about the need of money in, in foreign lands and uh, how we need to support and support missionaries. And as she went out the door, she shook his hand and left something cold in his hand. And after he, she went by, he looked, and there was a beautiful gold watch and chain. He showed it to the pastor. He said, Pastor, uh, that woman, and part of the woman, I left this beautiful gold wash, very valuable in my hands, the chain said, uh, why does she do that? He said, you can't, you can't keep that, sir. You can't keep that missionary. You just can't afford to do that. He said, why? And he told the story. He said, that's all she had left in the home that burned down. And that was a great grandfather's watch. And said, missionary, if I were you, I'd give it back to her. And this missionary went to her and said, lady, I'm sorry, but I, I can't take this watch. She began to cry. I said, you listen to me. Said, when you were talking about raising money for missions, I didn't have a penny, sir. And that's all I had. And I want you to take that watch and I want you to uh, uh, invest that watch in missions and, and uh, have support missions. That's all I got. And I want you to have all I have. And she began to cry. That missionary said I, she wouldn't take the watch back. But that missionary went everywhere he went and gave a lecture on supporting missions. He pulled that little gold watch out and told the people, what God had done. And you'd be surprised at the money he raised for missions just because he showed the watch and told what that woman did. And they said if that woman could do that, then we can help out too. Now God will bless you when you sacrifice. The, the widow woman that only gave the two mice came by and gave everything she had. Now God doesn't necessarily look at what you give as much as what you keep back. She gave everything she had. Now, God wants you to give your tithes. If you give your love offerings because you're loving, then that will please the Lord and God will bless you. And then God sees what we give. He knows what we make and He knows what we keep back. But I want you to remember this. Now, let this sink deep down into your ears. Now, I'll not be able to say too much about the message. I have much I could say about this line of thought, but I won't be able to today. The Bible said, Up on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in stores. God's prospered him. The first day is Sunday. On Sunday, when you come to God's house, don't forget your pocketbook. Bring it in and do what you need to do to the glory of God. All through the Bible, God has blessed that tithe and all the people that tithe. And God will bless you. God said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, shaken out, running over it. Shall God give unto you. And so you need to give and the Lord will bless you. And it's an act of obedience. It's an act of obedience. And let this sink deep down into your ears. Now listen, I'm not being mean. I'm trying to be kind. I'm your pastor. And if your pastor don't tell you right from wrong, he, if he doesn't tell you what you need to do, he's a poor preacher. And my responsibility is to tell you what you need to do. And if you don't do it, it's a matter of you and God. If God has to come around and collect those ties that you've robbed him from, God's going to collect uh, some interest along with it. Oh, you say, preacher, I can't afford it. Now listen to me, you can't afford not to if you're a born-again Christian. You'll come out a lot better if you did than you will if you don't. Now you need to realize that God will take care of your business if you'll take care of His business. And don't call yourself a tither if you're making uh, $100 a week and you're only giving um, uh, $8. Don't call yourself a tither. If you're only giving nine dollars, you only make. Don't call yourself a tither. You just say, "I give nine dollars. I don't tithe. I don't tithe because I didn't give the tenth. Tithing is a tenth, and you'd be safe if you've tithed your gross income, because a lot of that you're going to be coming back to you anyway through taxes that come back to you and things like that. And you'd be perfectly safe if you tithe from your gross income. Just be sure you tithe God's money and take care of God's money. Don't take God's money. And God will bless you as you sojourn. I'm trying to show you how to have blessings. God's blessings on you. How God will use you. How God will multiply what comes your way. And God will do things for you if you'll honor God. Yes, you go through testings. And if you yield and fall under the testing, then you're losing ground. 
You'll be tested and tried, but you do what God says to do, and God will do what He said He would do. And be patient, believe God, and honor God with your tithes and offerings, and always be glad you did. I'll tell you this, and I close. This is very touching. Some of you heard me tell it. Many years ago, there was a great evangelist. He put up a gospel tent, and a family of drunks got saved. The husband was a drunkard, beat his wife, beat his children unmercifully, half starved them. They went around barefooted, didn't have clothes, no way to get haircuts, and they looked terrible. And those people got saved, all except their daddy for, in this tent meeting, and finally daddy got saved. And that whole home changed. That man took his children in his arms and loved him. He loved his wife, quit drinking liquor, started saving his money to buying grocers and got them some clothes, and they had a wonderful Christian home. On the last night of this tent meeting, this little boy came up. He had red hair and overalls and barefooted. And he came up on the platform and tears in his eyes. He said, uh, uh, Mr. Preacher, he said, I'm so glad you brought your tent. He said, uh, he said um, Daddy got saved and he's different now. And, we have a different home, and I'm so glad you brought your tent, sir, and, and said, uh, our home's different now, and the little fellow was crying. And he, he said, Preacher, I don't have much to give you, but said, I want to give you what I have. Reached down to the bib of his overhaul and pulled out two little round tobacco tags, about the size of a quarter. That's the nearest thing you could find to a piece of money was two round tobacco tags. He took those tobacco tags, and he said, Preacher, this is all I have, and I want you to have it. God's been good to us. That preacher said, I started crying. I took those tobacco tags. And he said, money can't buy those tobacco tags. He said, every time I get discouraged, the devil gets on my back, I take out those tobacco tags and look at them. And God fires me up. And I keep on keeping on. I know if you're poor or rich, do right. And God will bless you. Let's stand our feet. Father, I pray today you'll use the message. Encourage thy people to do that is right. Lord, we're not asking them to do that that's not right in the matter of giving. We're asking them to do right in the matter of giving. And you said you'd bless them. Father, we know the sin of robbing God is an old sin. And it's locked down many churches. It short-circuited the power of God. It stopped the blessings of God. It's kept people from being saved and homes being saved. And God, I pray that you'll help us not to be guilty of this sin and speak to every heart here today. God, if you have some here that's robbing thee, that's not tithing, and say they're saved, help them to love you enough, Father, to tithe and give the offerings. Help them, Father, appreciate the fact you've been so good to them that they'd want to do it and do it because they love you and you've been so good to them. God, move on their hearts. The devil will come and steal this message and tell them when they go out the door they're not able, they can't do it, they'll do it later. Lord, we know that's the language of the devil, and you'll tell them before they leave, leave this building that they can't tithe. It's a lie of the devil. Every Christian father can tithe, and you see to it that don't lose by it. Bless everyone. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. While John plays for just a moment, if somebody in this building is unsaved, or you want to come back to God, you want to join this church, to come forward for the reason if God has spoken to your heart, maybe you want to come down and get on your knees and tell God that you've been guilty robbing him and you're going to ask him to forgive you you don't have to come down here but if you want to you could it's a matter between you and God how about it would you come would you do it Thank you for your kindness. Debbie's given birth to a baby. How many of you thinks it's a boy? Let me see your hands. Hands down. How many thinks it's a girl? Let me see your hand. It's a girl. <laughs> Six pounds, 15 ounces, baby girl. Mother and baby doing fine. What's your name? Uh, she named it uh, Virgie. <laughs> no, she hadn't named it. I don't know what they're going to name. They probably had a name already fixed up somewhere down the line. 